happy, happy day. This is the day the Lord has made, and we rejoice, and we are glad in it. want to welcome you tonight to Atlanta Live right here at WATC. We are so thankful that you've tuned in, and tonight, the next 60 minutes of your life can radically transform your life in just a matter of one hour of your life. And I would encourage you to call somebody, get on the phone, text somebody, get somebody to watch this show tonight, somebody that is struggling, somebody that is soaring, somebody that's going through any places in life. Got incredible music tonight, have an incredible guest tonight. It's just going to be a phenomenal night. I believe the Lord's got a set up. There are no coincidences in this life. The Lord has great things in store for us. I believe that the Lord will perfect that thing which concerns you. And I believe tonight this is a divine moment. It's a red-letter connection day that you've watched this show tonight. And we're going to go tonight to our first song, the Jordan B. Band, Hold Me. Hold Me. Amen. Your birth. No. 
praise God. Just incredible worship tonight by the Jordan B Band. They're going to be with us all night, several songs. But tonight I want to welcome to the stage tonight, to the, to the center tonight, my great friend that I just met just a couple hours ago is David Monroe. David, we are so glad that you're here tonight. Man, thank you for being here with us. And David's got a great spirit, even though he is from New Orleans, Louisiana. He's a Saints fan, so y'all stay tuned in spite of it. <laughs> Amen. So, but we're just so thankful that you're here, David. David, we, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Where did you grow up at? I, I grew up in, in, in New Orleans, Louisiana uh, most of my life uh, from Cali Housing Projects. Uh, stayed in a lot of trouble. Uh, and then in third grade, I was put out of all public schools for getting in trouble, and that led me to the streets. And I didn't really have or knew the, the importance of having somebody in my life to guide and direct me out. Yes, you know, and so I took to the streets and went to doing all kinds of little petty stuff. And before you know it, I, I landed in the Louisiana State Penitentiary at the age of 15. And from that point, you know, life just, 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 just took its destructive course in my life. Yes. But, you know, as I got older, I began to, to realize <clears throat> how other people's prayers have its works on you. Yes. You know, and it took me many years to understand that, you know. And, and even when they're dead and gone, you know, God never forgets the prayers that, that, that he heard from grandmothers and mothers and sisters and brothers. So it, it, it helped me out, and that's why I'm still here today. Amen. There's power in a grandmother's prayer, oh, a grandfather's oh, prayer. You yes, told me about your grandfather and yeah. your grandmother having such power. Yes, I believe yes. that's the truth. I believe those seeds that they pray, we pray, yes. I believe it, it holds eternal value. Right. Even though they may not see it when they're alive, they're going to see it sooner or later. Amen. Is that, that's right. Exactly. Well, David, I'm just so grateful. We're going to have a great time tonight. It's going to be just incredible. But... How did you come to find the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? All, all through my life, you know, I've been, I've been being worked on. You know, I, I went, to, I went to, to the juvenile homes at the age of 10. And all through my life, with no understanding, with no knowledge, I have been worked on. I've been worked on and constantly through other people's prayers and other people's faith. Yes. And I began to really, really believe that this uh, couple, a couple of Sundays ago when, when a pastor preached at the church that I go to here in Atlanta, and he, he spoke about how these men brought this, this man through a crowd of people to the roof to let him down so Jesus could, could, could heal him. Right. And, and then it was said that it was because of their faith that he was healed. And that, that pops up in my head. I'm like, because of their faith? Well, you mentioned anything about his faith, right. but it was their faith. So I knew from that point on, even though all those years had passed and I was still trying to hold on, mm. I knew that because of those people faith that had prayed for me and believed in me and hoped for me, yes. that that's why I'm still sitting here today because, you know, my life is, you know, it, you know it, it had to be, it had to be those prayers and those faith of other people that I'm still living today, and I'm very grateful. And I, I, I came into to Christ, knowledge of Christ in so many different ways, but always, always I would get a little bit and go. But he had a plan for me. That's right. So regard to how I may have felt or how I may have responded by, I couldn't do nothing with this plan. That's right. You know, I may have been slow. Okay, you want to take a long time? Okay, but well, go back to prison for 10 years. All right. Go back to prison for 25 years. You want to take a long time? Okay, it's still my plan. It doesn't matter how long that I have to wait. You're not going to wait until you do what I need you to do. And so that's why I'm here right now. I want to do what God wants me to do. Yes, sir. And my desire is to work with, you know, with at-risk kids. I want to work with young teenagers. I want to explain to them about how, it, how important it is for them to, to respect their parents. Yes. You know, if you don't have but one of you just living with a grandma, respect them. That's right. And God's going to bless you for respecting them. That's and I think that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate in so many ways. I'm blessed in so many Because I always respect the parents. No parents could ever say I ever got out the way with them. None. In fact, I was a little bit too much. Because I, I remember telling guys when they was young, you know, when I was foolish, and I understood why I said it. You know, my mama was right when she was right, and she was right when she was wrong. That's how I felt about my mom. Right. And as a child, as a, if I think as a child, I still feel like that about my mom. But as an adult, as a man, I know that that's not so. That's not pleasing to God. So I take that back. You know, I take that back. And I don't take it back to say, well, okay, you stick with your mama now. Regardless of what the situation is, you stick with her. You know, not 
And if there's something that you need to tell her that she's wrong about, you tell it to her on the side. You explain to her. But you love your mama. That's right. You love your father if he's there for you. But in most cases, we know the mama's always there. That's, that's right. That's, that's excellent, David. You, you're, you're doing tremendous. But don't you believe that God has a gift on every person? And I believe this. I believe that the gifts, the Bible says the gifts and the callings of God or that repentance. And I know you spend a lot of time incarcerated. But that gift never turned away. God never turned his back on you. Mm -mm. It's like Corey Tim Boom said. Corey Tim Boom said, they asked her why she went to the worst prisons in the world. And they asked her, why do you go there? Why do you go there? And she would say, there is no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. So do you believe sitting out here as a free man tonight that there's freedom of people that are actually in prison, incarcerated tonight? Be a, there's a lot of people watching. They have a loved one. They have somebody that they're married to, a spouse, a son, a daughter that's incarcerated tonight, what would you say to them to offer hope to them? Because you made it out, and you're, do, you're doing tremendous. I, I think that, that we should search our soul. I think that we should, we should read Scripture, and we should try to give it to our, our, our family members in that, in that peaceful, humble, calm way. Because a lot of time, you know, when a, and I don't like to use this term, but we understand it. When the devil is at work, when you're in his workshop, and you have work, it's hard for us to really see, especially when the parent or the aunt or the uncle is telling it to them so ruggishly, like, you better get with the Lord. You better try to find Jesus and all this kind of stuff. You have to be humble with them. Drop that seed like he said. Drop it. Because if you, if you allow them to get radical, upset, it's like you throwing it, a seed on cement. Oh, that's good. You know, that's good. are you putting it somewhere where when it does, when it does grow, it's going to be, it's going to be dominated by whatever destruction if it's not on good soil, That's right. if it's not on good ground, I'm going to say it like that. So we have, to be, we have to be patient with him. And if you feel like you can't be patient, just back up and pray. That's right. Back up and pray because your faith is more important than whatever it is that he's going through. Because whatever plan God got for him, he can't do nothing about it no how. He just got to go. He may take a long time, but he's going to do what God wants him to do. Yeah, that, that's, that's good. I, don't you believe Romans 5 and 8 that God commends his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, exactly. Christ died for us? Exactly. He, you, it was mentioned that, do I believe there's a sin that, that God won't forgive? I don't believe that. And, and even if I felt that way, I would be afraid to say it because logically speaking, God said he forgive all sins. So if I know what the word all mean, why would I get into my feelings and say, well, some of those things God ain't going to forgive. Who am I to say that? He said all. What does all mean? All mean all. That's right. You know, so I kind of like stay away, from, stay away from those things that I know people look for to story or look for reason to justify why we do. I was in that position. Yes, sir. You know, and I, and I, I never, I, I, I can accept being wrong. I can accept being wrong with calmness, yes. you know, with calmness. Uh, but I would, give, I would put up a fight if I don't know I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm going to put up a fight. No, that, that's, that's good. Well, man, you, you're, you're, you're doing good. Well, well I know when, when you were incarcerated, we talked about it, that, that you just didn't do your time. You were in prison, but prison wasn't really in you. You know, does that make any sense? So you, you became a bright light even in the, the, even in the prison in Louisiana. And, and, so, and you started this group called the Young Mature Gentlemen right. Group. What, tell me about that. Tell us about yeah. that, if you yeah. will. There, there was a group of youngsters, uh, young boy, there was... There was, there was there was one, some of the most destructive young brothers that, that we had, and it was both black, white, you know, uh, and, and there was like real radical ones, and they were always looking for something to be a part of, but they want to be a part of it in their way, in their manner, with their swag, so to speak. And so we, we, we come up with a name, uh, YMGs, that was the title, you know, YMGs, and they got off into it, and dislike it always happened. There's always somebody to not to like something because of whatever it is that they may have, whatever reason they may have. And we, we, we began to struggle in the area where, that we shouldn't be struggling. But for the most part, they were, they were okay with coming together, with understanding that, you know, if we learn better, we can do better. That's right. They understood that. And so for, for the most part, many of them got, got trades, many of them got their GD. And it was like, it, 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 was, a, it was a lesson for me because it made me know I believe that, okay, this is a part of what God wants you to be, to be involved in. And I never worried about getting a trade, all the trades that they had in the prison. And I like people that ask me, like, you, you got a trade? No, I didn't get a trade. I was always into public relations. 
I was always into something that involved communicating with people. Yes. Because that was, that's where my passion was at. Yes. And that's where it is now. And so now my testimony is, is to me, is what, it's my, it's my way of seeing what God has, has, has assigned for me. And so I just wanted to share it, you know, just, just, and I want to also, I want to live comfortably. I want to have a peaceful home. I want to be able to, to know that I'm okay in this life. Yes, well, I, you got a tremendous heart, David. I can tell that you got a lot of passion for people, and I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful. I, I know you, you did different groups, not even just the YMGs, but you did the 12-step oh, program. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The, the, uh, the, the NAAA program, uh, you know, it was, it, was a very, it was a very powerful program to me because, you know, as, a, as, a, as an ex-heroin user, uh -huh. uh, you know, I knew that what I was doing and what other people do when it comes time to doing drugs, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a behavior that, that allows us to believe that this is what works. Mm. You know, this is what helps me get through the day. Right. And, so, and so when I got into it, I, I, became, uh, I became very interested in the information. And the information allowed me to see what it was that was causing me to make these bad decisions. Yes. And so I, I changed, you know, and, 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 you know, for many years now, I wouldn't doubt smoke a cigarette or mess with heroin or any kind of drug, for, you know, and I just try to keep myself conscious of how it works. Yes. It works if you work it. That's right. You know, whatever the, whatever the program is that you're into that, that's, that's preventing you from becoming a, a, a drug abuser, if it's working for you, you got to work it. You got to work it every day. That's right. And you must keep you must keep it in mind that that if it, when it get hard, you gotta you gotta go you gotta go straight to him. You need a program long, go straight to God. I, I agree with that because you know the Bible says that he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And Jesus can set can set anybody free, and even somebody even a, a person that is an, an, a heroin addict can be set free. Is what you're saying? Somebody, no matter what the power of the drug, methamphetamines, cocaine, crack, no matter what it is, Jesus matter. can it, set them free. You believe that? Yeah, it don't matter what it is. There ain't no, ain't no problem. Come on it, now. It don't, it don't matter what it is. You know, and, and, and Pastor must say, you know, me personally, I, I cannot, I cannot understand how did I do all those years in prison. You know, and I know guys who've done more years, 40 and 45 and 50 years straight. Mm -hmm. You know, I did 10 years, come back, did seven years, and this last time I did 25 straight years. You know, people be like, oh, why does a lot of time? But I know people who I would say the same thing to. But how was I able to make it through there is what, is what I, I live to, to thank God for every day. I live to thank him for every day. And, I, and I'm, very, I'm very emotional from time to time, you know, you know, his, 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 his grace and his mercy are just causing me to just bust out and talk. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, and I asked him, I asked him coming when I was praying, coming there, I said, Lord, I don't need to be doing no crying on TV. <laughs> so you'll hold these tears up to maybe later on. No. And he blessed me. Because yes. there's no tears coming out of these eyes right oh, now. You're you doing know? great. I, I, you're doing great. Yeah, and, I, and I feel good about that because normally I would be so emotional, so grateful, so thankful, you know, because God is so good. No. You know, you, you, you know, it's like, like I'm, the, the guys who, you know, my, my peers, you know, I know that it's difficult for them to understand. Yes. I know. But it's not for you to understand. It's for you just to stop every now and then and just give God the moments that he needs so that he can drop something on you and you can have something to work with. It's like you can't drive that car all day without putting no gas in that's, it. That's right. So you got to put gas in it. Amen. That's, that's so good, David. I'm just, that's so, so good. You just, because don't you believe praise is a powerful thing to the Lord? Oh, Gratitude, being grateful. Yes. And I believe every time when, you, when you've been through some things like you've been through and you get out of the things that you've been through, maybe you ought to always be grateful. Like the 10 lepers all got healed, but only one came back and thanked Jesus. Man, man. I believe that's, that's you, man. I believe you're the one to come back and say, thank you, Lord. Great, great, gratefulness is, gratefulness is definite. You know, it's, it's all, it's, it's, it comes out of my heart every day. You know, I, I try my best to do things for people, to help people. And I also ask God to not let people misunderstand my effort to help them yes. or to do good. You know, a, a couple of times I walked and opened the door for a person, and they're like, where you from? What planet you fell off? You know, and I'm like, you know, because I opened the door for them, and some people have rejected. That's right. And I have to be careful because, you know, that old person, that old mentality was like, you know, that's what's wrong with the world today, you know, but I don't have nothing to say about that. If that's, that's what they do. That's what you do because I got my blessing already. No, that's you not. Know, I'm hold on to it. Well, man, David, you, you, you're, you're doing so good. So let me just ask you one more thing. So you're saying 
that if somebody has a person that is incarcerated right now, what should they do? Should they just give up on them? Should they throw the towel in? They've gone over the last chance five times. This is the last chance, the last chance. And there's, I believe tonight, I believe there's tonight, there's parents and there's, there's, there's spouses watching that are, that are discouraged, that are hurting. And they're at the end of their rope on, ah, man, I'm, I'm, I've gone as far as I can go. What would you tell them tonight? You know, I mean, based, based upon our, our, you know, everybody have a different family background. And I think that that person should just, you know, go too far into history. Just look at the family background and try to work with that particular person based upon the information that you know, the things you know from the background of that family. And go to God in prayer and take those things in and be considerate because it may not really be his fault for making those decisions, but because of what happened down the line, you know? And so you will be, if you get this information, you'll be able to work with that person in a manner that maybe his cousin or maybe his uncle, they may have went through it and this is what was done. Yes, sir. But a lot of times we start right here and we think this is where that problem started at. Mm -hmm. That problem came from way down there somewhere. So go seek that information and ask God to give it to you. That's right. You know, you make, you do your work first. Don't just ask God, God give it to me. Do some work. That, that's, you no, know, do some that. work, and then put your faith into that work, and then, you know, you have you have a solution. No doubt about God, it's not going to let you down. That's good. He's not going to let you down. Well, well I, I know you were very close to your mom. Your mom passed away, and and it, and it was devastating to you, but you still kept going. And we got about one more minute, and and I know one of the big things is you you want to be a better son to your mother. How what would you say to somebody that wants to be a better son to their mom? You know, in order for you to become the man that you think you want to be or that you hope you could be, you have to be. You have to be amazing to your mother. Mm. You have to be amazing. You have to try to do your best. If there's somebody that's around you that's not giving you that, that, that leadership or that guy, find somebody, yes. a school teacher, a coach, or somebody, that's you right. know, to, to give it to you. Because your purpose is, I want to please my mom. I want to make my mom happy. Amen. Because you can believe she's praying for you. Well, that's so good, David. You're doing so great. God bless you, David. Thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Tremendous testimony. Going right here to our music set, Jordan B. Band. Now that I've found the Lord. Amen. Now that I've found the Lord. streets praising the Lord they're talking about his goodness they're talking about his grace don't you know As our first war to save here, don't you know?
and welcome to the prayer room here at TV 57 during the Atlanta Live broadcast. We've had numerous calls tonight for healing, for financial increase. We've had prayers for marital problems and for peace in mind, heart, soul, and body. I pray right now that you'll call if you have a request from the Lord. He's still in the miracle working business. And if you do not know the Lord in the pardoning of your sins, pray this prayer with me. Romans 10, 9, 10, if thou shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Father, you must say, I know I'm a sinner, but I believe God. And right now, watch God change your life. Feel free to call us at the number 770-300-9828, and we will take your call and pray with you. Now, back to the music set.
lot. Praise the Lord. Incredible worship tonight. Incredible worship by the Jordan B. Band. We're just so thankful. So thankful for David Monroe. Just an incredible testimony tonight. But here's what I was thinking. You know, the greatest, they've said that the greatest distance in the world is the distance between the person that you are and the person that you're capable of becoming. The distance between the person that we are and the person that we're capable of becoming. And the thing is, is how we grow in life, and many times people don't want to talk about it, but we get tested. You ever been tested? Maybe you're going through a test right now. The Bible says, the book of James said, the testing of our faith produces patience. James said, let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, lacking no defects. And James went on to say, if any man asks, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering for a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. My question to you is, what are you going to do during your testing times? Because testing produces patience, yes. Testing produces, watch this, endurance. It produces character. If it was easy, anybody could do it. But when you're getting tested, that means it's just going to get better for you. Amen. This trouble don't come to stay. Trouble always comes to pass. Am I right about it? Trouble always comes to pass. And if God brought it to you, he's going to bring you through it. God is on your side. And what you need to be saying if you're being tested, say, Father, I don't understand what's going on. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to commit my way to the Lord. I'm going to trust also in him. And you're going to bring it to pass whatever you've got in my life to do. I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart. I'm going to acknowledge you in all my ways. I'm going to not lean to my own understanding. I'm going to believe that you're going to direct my paths. That's a lot of preaching, but we're on a preaching network. Amen? But what, 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 if I'm in the middle of this test, Pastor, what am I supposed to do? It seems like God is silent, but you always understand. When I was in school, the teacher was always silent when the test was being administered. And school is starting back, and people are going to be going back, and we're going to be going to next grade levels and grade levels. And I always hated tests, but... The thing is, when the test is going on, you're going to find out what you know. And the thing is, what I would, under, I would really encourage you to know tonight, if you're in the middle of the hardest test you've ever been, and you're not in that test by yourself, you're not in that test alone, well, how do you know I'm not alone, Pastor? Because here's what I know about the Lord that we serve. If you've made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you may not have your life together, but what he's done is well more than enough. Amen? He's, he's far greater than anything we'll ever go through or ever go to. And what I would encourage you to always understand this. If you're going through a hard test in your life, he'll be the fourth man in the fiery furnace. Amen? Even if you're going through the raging storm and storms are hitting you like you've never imagined in your life, and you've just tuned into this out of the thousands of networks tonight, and you see this show, and you see the WATC, and you see this tonight, and you don't understand why you tuned in, maybe this is the reason you tuned in. Because here's the truth. You're in the middle of the raging storm. Your finances are jacked up. Your health is jacked up. Your children are going one way or another, and it's just in insanity is going on in your house, and stress and anxiety anxiety and depression and drug overdoses, just incredible times. But what I would always understand, in the middle of the raging storm, if you look back to the shore, Jesus is coming walking on the water to come into your deal. Amen? Aren't you glad that he will? He walks right in the middle of the storm. He walks right through the walls. He walks right into the fiery furnace right with us. You're never alone. So if you feel like I'm just overwhelmed by life, you just need to get your eyes off of what you're going through and get your eyes on what you're going to. Winners talk about what they're going. Well, losers talk about what they're going through. Winners talk about what they're going to. And winners make commitments and losers make excuses. It's the truth in life. And so the truth is, the rain's falling, the wind's blowing, and the floods are rising. I'm being beat on every side. Pastor, what should I do? I'm so glad that you asked this. You ought to trust God instead of trusting the test. Amen. Trust God. Put your faith in God. Everything in life is a process. And for you to go from where you are to where God has taken you, there's going to be some things that ain't going to go with you to the next level. Come on, somebody. There's going to be some glass ceilings you're going to break through. There's going to be some relationships. I'm not preaching. There's going to be some relationships in your life that will never go to the next level with you because there's something spectacularly great in your life. There's something phenomenally anointing in your life, and they can't handle it. Most people, they can handle it when you stay on this level with them, but when you begin to to rise to the next level. Come on, somebody. When you begin to go and do the places and do the things 
things and you begin to be the person that God created you to be. Come on now. You begin to be the person that God created you to be with all this greatness, all this acceptance and no guilt and shame and condemnation and no, not, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm the wrong color. I don't have the right kind of money. You can make a thousand excuses, but you just got to have one reason. Lord, I'm going to follow you. And here's what I would tell you if you're in the middle of the hardest test of your life. I believe some of the greatest encouragement you'll ever receive is really in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the second verse. And the Bible says this. What do I do in the test, Pastor? The Bible says this. Turn to it. Hebrews 12, verse 2 and verse 3. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He is not only the alpha of your life, he's the, he's the omega of your life. He's the beginning and the ending of your life. And if you're going through something right now, baby doll, you need to understand you can be confident of this very thing, that he which has started a good work in you will bring it all the way to completion. Psalms 138.8 said, the Lord will perfect that thing which concerns you. And I believe the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. And God has a call for your life, but you're not going to be able to do it within your own self. Quit looking at all your friends and all your social media connections and everybody else and get your eyes on Jesus. Lift your eyes above the fray and get your eyes on the Lord. I'm not preaching. I'm just talking. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy hmm, set before him, he endured the cross. He endured the cross. He had patience of the cross. I'm glad that my Jesus carried my cross, aren't you? I'm glad that Jesus was nailed to a cross for my sin and my shame and my iniquities. He did what I couldn't do for my own self, and I love him tonight. I'm not ashamed of him tonight. He changed my life. He rescued my life. He lifted me up out of the miry clay, and he set my feet on the rock to stay. I ain't never been the same person when I met Jesus, and you can meet him tonight right here. Call that number right now tonight. Well, I'm just in such a bad storm. Well, honey, you doing your same thing you've always done, and you're, gonna get, you're not going to get different results. That's the definition of insanity. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endures the cross, despising the shame, and now is set down at the right hand of the Father. But how can I be, how can I be at the right hand of God? How can I be, how can I have joy in the middle of this storm? How can I have joy in the midnight hour? Here's how I know, because weeping endures for the night, but joy is always coming in the morning. Joy is going to come in your morning. Amen. Joy is coming in your morning. But you got to understand, hmm, this test is just a temporary time. Amen. It's a temporary thing. It ain't going to be forever always going to be like this. But you got to lift your eyes to the hills from where your help comes from. I'm not preaching. I'm just talking. They gave me three minutes, and I'm already at 12. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But the raging water, look at, because how I can understand that the test, here's, here's how I can understand because Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, the greatest fan that you will ever have in this life, the greatest person that is pulling for you in this life is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, seated at the right hand of the Father, ever living to make intercession for us. You're the reason that he died on the cross. I'm the reason that he died on the cross. What a Savior. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endures the cross, is set down at the right hand of the Father. Lest, 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 in the middle of the test, you, lest you become discouraged, lest you become discouraged and you, and you get weary in your souls. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus in the middle of storms, in the middle of difficulties, in the middle of inf inflation. In the middle of gas prices, everybody's paying the same. But here's what I know. This is going to pass. This is going to pass. Just like Jesus walked into the fourth man in the fiery furnace with the children of Israel, there is no weapon formed against you. Can I talk for a moment? There is no weapon formed against you going to prosper, baby. There is no weapon formed against you in your life that is going to win in your life because God has designed you with a purpose in your life. He's, he's made you accepted in the beloved. He has chosen you. He's redeemed you. He will restore Restore your life. Everything the devil stole from you out of your life, he'll bring that back into your life. Ain't no weapon formed against you going to prosper. The Lord is the strength. The, David said, the Lord is my, my light, my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my shield. He that dwells in the secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Well, Pastor, I, you just don't understand, Pastor, because I'm just going through the most difficult time I've ever gone through in my life. 
A lot of people are, but tough times don't last, but tough people do. And I believe if you're in the body of Christ and you're, you're sanctified and set apart by the glory of God, by relationship with Jesus Christ, there's toughness, there's iron in your soul, and you will win in this life because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Paul said there is nothing in this world that can separate us from the love of God. The Lord is the strength of our life. Nothing can separate from not even your own self, not even my own self can separate me from the love of God. What a Savior. What a Savior. So if I'm in the middle of the test, I'm going to keep my eyes on Him. If He brought me to this test, He's got a lot of faith in me, and I'm going to get on the other side of this test. It's tough right now, but it ain't always going to be tough. Mm. It's difficult right now, but it ain't always going to be difficult. My, my time's coming. You ought to start wake up in the morning and say, glory to God. You ought to have praise in your lips. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice, and I'm going to be glad in it. I may not have tomorrow. I can't change yesterday, but here's what I can do. I can give God praise right now as long as I got breath in my body. Amen, that's too preachy, and I understand. But here's the thing, we most, most people are crucified between th two thieves. So this other day, people are crucified between two thieves. Crucified between the thief of re the regret of yesterday and the fear of tomorrow. Honey, today is the only thing you got. You can't go back and change yesterday, and you ain't even promised tomorrow. But I'm going to win this battle today. And you got to win this battle today by putting your trust. Come on now. Putting your trust in God. Putting your faith in Him. Keeping your eyes on Him. He's the one that made you. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. David said, even though he even anoints my head with oil, even in the midst. He, I, the, the Lord prepares a table before me, even in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy, come on now, will follow me all the days of my life. I believe better days are coming. I believe the storm is over. I believe the nightfall is stopping. The morning's coming. And I believe the best days are in front of you. The rest of your life is going to be the best of your life. Your best days had not been lived yet. Your best days are in front of you. Can you say amen right there? That's good. Got another song right now. Jordan B. Band, Isn't That Love? Amen.
Praise God, we've had a tremendous show tonight. The Jordan B Band doing tremendous, and, and D David Monroe just did incredible. I'm so thankful that you tuned in tonight. It's been a tremendous honor for us, for me to be here tonight and to share with you. But everyone, I want you to know, I, I know somebody's watching this tonight, and you need to hear this, that God really loves you. Unconditional, unbreakable, unmeasurable. There's nothing you can do that can separate you from his love. All you need to do is call on him. Well, Pastor, when I get my life together, no, no, do it right now. Do it right now. Call that number. They'll help you. I promise you they'll help you. But I don't know how to talk to God. I don't either. But that, the people on that phone number right there can help you because you're loved by God. I don't care what you're going through, how far you think you've fallen down. You how far there is no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. Honey, I'm consumed with the love of God, and I'm telling you, He loves you with an unbreakable, an unquenchable, an unmeasurable love. Not like human being love. It's the love of God. We got one more great song, Jordan B. Band, Do You Love? Amen. So 